Hello, I'm Davia Chambers and this is Let's Talk Tobago. Today we're at the exclusive Villa Bing. This exquisite property is located on a mountain plateau at the southwest tip of Tobago. We'll show you the private comfort it offers in fashionable style. But first, a look at some of our top stories this week. Investing in local businesses to grow Tobago's economy. Making our motto, clean, green, safe and serene, a part of everyday life. And in case you missed it, highlights from the ongoing Tobago Heritage Festival. Stay with us for these stories and more after the break. Going to Barbados? Why continue to pay high prices when you can get there for only U.S. $231.95, all taxes included? Yes, you heard right. You can now travel to Barbados from Tobago for a mere U.S. $231.95 on Gold's weekly service. So if you're going to Barbados for business, the beach, crop over, or attending university, stop wasting your money on those other high-priced airlines and get there for a fraction of the cost. To book, just log on to www.vogue.com. Google.com.br. Barbados just got closer. This is Let's Talk Tobago. The idea here at Villa Being is to deliver a perfectly tailor-made experience that takes full advantage of the natural environment. Now, business is good for the economy and for Tobago, but financial assistance is often needed to help some companies grow. That's why a total of $2 million will be given to two Tobagonian companies to reach their goals. More from Omodara Mills. These drinks represent a beverage company with Tobagonian roots. It's a family-owned business that's in Trinidad, but it will be moving its operations to the Cove Eco-Industrial and Business Park soon. In addition to the move, the company will now be able to employ locals, cut production costs, and increase its revenue. How? It's a beneficiary of financing from the THA's Venture Capital Equity Fund Limited. We see how important it is, not only for ourselves and these a company born in Tobago, but also for Tobago itself. Another business that's getting financial assistance from the Venture Capital Equity Fund is Quiet River Corporation Limited a woodwork company. As long as I have employees, that means that my production levels will be up. That means I could advertise more. That means I could deliver more timely basis. The venture capital strategy is one where the THA invests in the businesses and becomes a shareholder for a maximum of 10 years. In that time, the Assembly's representatives will participate in the management of the companies and provide other technical support. The THA will also get a percentage of the profits. We offer an opportunity where they can be supported by the Assembly so that they can move forward and create environment and development in Tobago. And this is in keeping as well with our... Um, comprehensive economic development plan. $25 million have been set aside for the THA's Venture Capital Equity Fund Limited investment in various enterprises. Currently, the committee is reviewing seven applications, a strategy that will see greater diversification and strengthening of the island's economy. I'm Umudara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. Villa Bing is one of the top wedding and honeymoon hotspots on the island. It has been described as an inspiring property, one with the sea, sky, sun, and setting. Young people are getting a crash course in professional development. They're being equipped with the necessary tools for work, as well as information that could potentially change their professional environment. Keyshawn Wilson explains. Learning about Tobago's journey for achieving self-governance and what it means for future generations. That's what these young energized for success, yes participants, are getting to know about in their weekly seminar. It's a topic that young adults like 20-year-old Josan Hackett, a law student at the University of the West Indies, is grateful to be educated on. I think it was very informative and um, we should have more of this with younger persons because a lot of young persons, as the question was raised, do not know about these things. One of the 30 participants in the program this vacation is 18-year-old accounting student Dexter Wilson. 
he says that this seminar is a very informative one for him. I have not been as up to date as I should have been on the whole internal self government discussion. And from today, I have my eyes have been opened and I am fully aware. The Yes Initiative is a program that's under the Division of Finance and Enterprise Development. Participants are involved in summer internships, field trips, and workshops that are applicable to their professional development. So educating them on Tobago's quest for more control over its own affairs is a topic that's relevant. I felt that it was fitting for these young people who are getting ready to get out of the back seat into the driver's seat of the island's development and the island's advancement to get a greater understanding and appreciation for where Tobago is heading um, as it relates to internal self-government. It's hoped that the experiences which these students go through in the program will lead to improved productivity and better work ethic among young Tobagonians. I'm Keyshawn Wilson for Let's Talk Tobago. Villa Being demands that you have it your way. The living room opens onto a terrace that overlooks the pool and offers music and books that are perfect for your much needed relaxation. Perhaps you've already started a business in your home but need help to take it to the next level. Our next story highlights a company that began with one customer and with support has become a manufacturer with international exposure. The owner of Just Right Creations Limited, Giselle Johnny, is in the business of using local tropical fruits to make juices, jellies, salad, dressings, and even barbecue sauce. She started with one customer in 2010 and with financial assistance from the Business Development Unit in 2011, she was able to expand her business to supply over 20 outlets with her products. More than that, Giselle is among the local business owners who the BDU assists in going to local, regional and international trade shows. I've been able to attend the TIC in Trinidad. There we are able to meet a whole lot of other businesses, manufacturers. Um, everything you can think about is almost like a one-stop shop. The opportunities that you're exposed to is endless. Also the um, Summer Fancy Food Show, this year was my second year attending. Um, the first year last year was a real learning experience and um, I think not only myself but the whole team that was taken by the Business Development Unit would have really grown from last year to this year. The marketing, branding and the networking exposure is having a positive impact on businesses like Giselle's. There was a lot of interest, we have a lot of leads. The entrepreneur says she understands the important role the BDU plays in getting the local cottage industries to grow into well-established companies. It's critical. It's a hand-in-hand -hand partnership and I don't think we, able to, we would not have been able to go out there and do that on our own. So I think it's a critical partnership to get you know, the whole agro-processing sector going to the next level. BDU's initiatives are driven by the THA's mission to help grow small businesses on this island through grants, seminars and various networking events, all aimed at strengthening Tobago's economy. I'm Umadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. Do you think table manners are a thing of the past? We have some people who'll answer that for you after this break. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Let's Talk Tobago. We're at Villa Being, which brags of three dining areas, covered, uncovered, and open. We're here at the covered area with a terrace that gives you an amazing view. You're never too young to learn the fine points of hospitality. High school students were given a lesson on social etiquette, which is important in everyday life, as well as in the tourism industry. Weather dining with a four-star general toasting at your friend's wedding or sitting with family on Christmas Eve. An understanding of dining protocol makes time spent around a table more enjoyable. When you know the rules, there is no awkwardness or uncertainty about how things should be done. It is a skill often taken for granted, dining and social etiquette. But the students of Speyside High School were given a lesson on the basic principles and how to avoid social embarrassment. 
It was one of the lessons taught while the students were at the Tobago Hospitality and Tourism Institute, THTI, touring and learning about the institution and the many opportunities it offers. It's a very hands-on approach to teaching, and in this instance, they're finding out how to set the table for a four-course meal, basic social interaction, and the table manners that will benefit their overall development. Etiquette, customer service, how you behave around people is very vital for the industry and it's, it's vital for the development of the industry. Etiquette will always benefit anyone regardless of um, what sphere they go in because it's a, it's a mannerism, a way of um, being comfortable around people, being comfortable to eat um, in front of people, being comfortable to socialize. And this happens the more the students put into practice what they have learned. THTI hopes they will begin by preparing the table during the mealtime for their families and friends, something these fort formers promise to do. I will try to practice this table setting at home. For the teachers of the food and nutrition program, field trips like these help to give students a better appreciation for their studies. It will enlighten them and also encourage them to go further into the hotel industry area. Dining and social etiquette is just one of the many self-enhancement courses offered at the Tobago Hospitality and Tourism Institute as it attempts to improve the quality of customer service on the island. From the Division of Tourism and the Transportation, I'm Julia James reporting for Let's Talk Tobago. We're giving you a special tour of Villa Being today. Here at the open dining area, family get-togethers are perfect, especially on warm, sunny days. Now, music is an expression of our life, and one of the sweetest sounds comes from our national instruments. This year, students from across the island are again getting the opportunity to not only learn to play, but to appreciate culture through song. <laughs> This is just one of the songs that these children, ages 7 to 15, are learning at this year's Pan Camp. Among the 42 children is 11-year-old Larissa Gruden, who plays the double second pans. This is her third year at the camp, and she enjoys being able to learn new things and develop her musical abilities. I like learning more sounds, and I learned how to hold my sticks properly. When they say to stop, you stop and not to play too loudly because you can empty the pants. But I could learn to be a better player and I could be a professional at this. In addition to those elements, the children learn the history of the steel pan and some basic music theory. But it's not just these children at the Our Boys Pan side who are gaining from this experience. Camps are also held at the Tiantec East Side New Dimension Pan Yard Mason Hall Secondary School and the Bonacord Government Primary School. So that means more children can benefit from the experience. I usually see a lot of students that never had any experience playing the pan, they end up playing for Panorama and stuff like that with different schools. The camp is put on by the Division of Education, Youth Affairs and Sport. It's an activity that's in keeping with the THA's goal for the human advancement of the island. So in addition to in addition to learning to play, learning to read music, you know what I mean? The child will have a kind of personal development started then. The four weeks camp will end in a ceremony dubbed the Grand Affair. It will take place at the Shore Park Complex, where the children will show off what they learned and be serenaded by some top steel band performers. I'm Umarara Mills for Let's Talk to Bego. Each of the villa's rooms are uniquely designed with a loft and open air showers to enhance that meditative feeling of being a part of nature. So how much do you love Tobago? Are you filled with Tobago pride? Are you motivated to do all in your power to ensure our motto of clean, green, safe and serene holds true? This story from Anika Springer may inspire you. Schools, communities and groups will once again get a chance to work with the Pride of Tobago project. The idea is to get them to put their heads together and come up with solutions to a problem affecting their community. 
It's hoped that this collaboration will lead to this. It's geared towards instilling a greater sense of civic pride and uh, fostering that sense of appreciation and love for Tobago in the minds of Tobagoans. In previous years, the project focused primarily on environmental enhancement and public awareness. But this year, they've added another layer. They're putting culture at the forefront and ensuring all age groups participate. Art, Calypso, a community project, a community crest, and a top 10 video clip are the avenues that will be used to achieve this goal. This year, we maintain the same objectives, but we have broadened the scope of the projects and we are going to be instilling civic pride in Tobagoians through a, a video clip competition, a top 10 video clip competition, where we are going to where we are targeting secondary school students, uh, tertiary school students, and young persons below the age of 33 to produce an inspirational piece stating, you know, why they love Tobago. Pride of Tobago is a project coming out of the Department of Community Development, but it continues to receive funding and support because past experiences show it's effective in bringing about change. What we did, we, when we went into the community, we had workshops that was focused around those particular issues affecting that community. So you find that there's a greater sense of awareness in that community as regards the environmental issues affecting them within that community. So if you think this is something you'd like to get involved in, call 461-4334 or visit the project's Facebook page and YouTube channel for more information. Registration is now open for the video aspect of the competition. I'm Anika Springer for Let's Talk Tobago. Tobago's community treasures are on display. It's a celebration of sorts. Want to find out more? Stay with us after this break. Tobago Hospitality and Tourism Institute invites interested persons to register for its upcoming short course programs for the July-August period. Short courses being offered are Tobago Sweets, Food Art, Formal Cake Decorating, Bartending and Mixology. Interested persons can contact the Institute at 660-2196, extension 2004, for further information. Tobago Hospitality and Tourism Institute, committed to tourism, committed to you. Thanks for staying with us. This is Let's Talk Tobago. Trinidadian tourism consultant Dr. Oliana Poon built Villa Bing because she saw a need for travelers to have a more luxurious experience. One of Tobago's favorite annual events began with great pride at the Shaw Park Complex, the opening ceremony of the Tobago Heritage Festival, a wonderful celebration steeped in rich culture on display. Here are some highlights. Our African and European heritage. Two aspects of Tobago's history that shaped what the island and its people are today. But Tobago is more than this. So, at this year's Tobago Heritage Festival's opening at the Show Park Complex, the story of other aspects of Tobago's traditions were on display, with a focus on the recognition of the island's community treasures. The theatrical presentation brought to life different attractions who vied for the respect and attention of Mother Father Tobago. They included the one-eyed spirit of Fort King George, the spirit of the silk cotton tree, the Boko Reef Marine Park's twins, and the rainforest child. The cultural children of Mother Father Tobago also made their case to be the fairest attraction of them all, from traditional mass relatives to spoiled child Bel Air. My personality and temperament was hugely fashioned and shaped by my godparents. Timeless hours were dedicated to fashion the true, multi talented child that I 
I'm proud to be. In the end, her mother, father, Tobago, reminded them of the harsh events such as slavery and Hurricane Flora that they have survived because of unity. Always keep in mind that every single one of all you come from the same belly and the same lungs. So you all are one. All are we one family. All are we one family. The Tobago Heritage Festival will have several villages showcasing their community treasures for two weeks. And just as with last year, the Heritage Festival will continue until November for an extended showcase of the island's traditions. I'm Umudara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. Built in 1999 and designed by local architect Roger Turton, Villa Bing is made up of small structures which feature 12 patios and large wooden doors and windows that complement its stylish design. And another major aspect of the Heritage Festival is the captivating beauty, talent and individuality of Tobago's young women. And we've got all the highlights. The 11 young ladies, each representing villages and cultural clubs, all hoping to be crowned Miss Heritage Personality 2015. But first, they needed to convince the judges through dance, dramatic monologues, I am the cardiac bone in the vein. Mount St. George wasn't only about the performing arts center. Old people say, when it pass you, it miss you. And folk songs. Well, immense from the people of yesterday. Blessed as a dancing chancel. Billy, do make them put on my trail. That they embody the competition's theme, recognition, yesterday, today, and tomorrow. In the end, it was. Miss Heritage. Personality 2015 goes to Ms. Janelle, Janelle Fraser. Fraser. Janelle walked away with the grand prize of $10,000 and all the perks and privileges that come with the one-year ring. Ms. Pembroke, Monique Mendoza, is the first runner-up, while Ms. Candy Mount Pleasant, Chanel Felix, is the second runner-up. I'm Anika Springer for Let's Talk Tobago. An infinity pool built on stilts, a personal chef who also gives cooking lessons and a monsieur for that spa treatment. All are available at request right here at Villa Bean. Staying with the culture theme, let's tell you that one of this country's musical icons, Calypso Rose, is preserving her place in Tobago's history. That's one of over 800 songs which Calypso Rose contributed to the world of music. In her career, this Calypso icon has received hundreds of awards. Now, this world-class singer, who's born in Bethel, has decided to give back. And she's starting with a bust of herself that weighs over 100 pounds. But there are hundreds of other awards that she hopes to donate to the Tobago Heritage Museum to ensure her legacy is remembered in the way she wants. I want to, to bring them here in the museum that after I go on further, the whole, all the, all the, all, all the tourists, the guests, the family, the friends will come and see Calypso Rose work in the Museum of Tobago. The Tobago Heritage Museum at Fort King George is a space that houses artifacts which showcase the contributions that people made to the development of the island. So this bust will fit right in, since it symbolizes the work Calypso Rose has done in the growth and the global appreciation of the Calypso genre. As a Calypsonian, she became the first woman to win the road march competition in 1977 with her song, Tempo. And 
1978, she won the Calypso King competition, which then had to be renamed the Calypso Monarch competition. For all that she's been through, she's glad to have the opportunity to give back to the island's historical collection. I feel happy and I have to say thank God that I, that I am alive after um, being a survivor twice and, and, and I could do this at this very present moment. I feel great about it. The Division of Community Development and Culture appreciates the work that's done by this Calypso icon. It also supports organizations and people like Calypso Rose who seek to uphold the musical traditions of Tobago since those initiatives add to its mandate of preserving our island's culture for generations to come. I'm Umadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. Now it's time for you, our viewers, to have your say. We're staying on top of the pressing issues related to air and sea transportation. As you might be aware, Caribbean Airlines, the Port Authority and the Tobago House of Assembly came together to identify ways in which the service can be improved. At the end of that meeting, they announced a soon-to-be-introduced new ticketing system and the option to purchase your ferry tickets online. So a question for you is, do you think these two changes will significantly improve the inter-island system? This is what you said. For we who live in the country, sometimes we really want to purchase a ticket and you have to come all the way to Scarborough to purchase a ticket. Say something good. I think that the new system it will be good for the younger folks like us because we are computer literate, so it will be easy for us to stay at home at work and book flights and purchase our tickets. With all the systems and things in place, if you don't have boat and plane to carry a passenger, they go put what system you want. I don't think it will work. I find it's very good and it could be good for the people. In terms of you know you get into your, to the port or to the airport, you'll still have this congestion. To me, that, that's, that's my opinion. With the ferries, that's even more awesome because um, you, know, you could book a ticket online, that's rather convenient. And that's how we bring this week's edition of Let's Talk Tobago to a close. Remember, you can send us your comments or queries on anything you've seen in this program to information at thagovernorttt or you can even visit us at www.thagovernorttt. Like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Davia Chambers and on behalf of all of us at the Department of Information, have a safe and enjoyable week. As we go, we want to leave you with some more images from the ongoing Tobago Heritage Festival.